After scrolling through some listings, you're finally thinking about buying a used iMac and you want to know what important things to check out or test before buying. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to test before buying a used iMac, as well as some other things you may want to be aware about before you go out there and buy one. Now, before you head out there and buy the computer, there are two things you want to bring. The first being some sort of Bluetooth or wireless accessory that can connect to the computer and make sure that functionality works. And then the other thing you want to bring too is cables, adapters, accessories that you can plug into the ports of the computer and test out as many ports as possible. So the first thing you're going to check out is the condition. And this is kind of obvious, but just make sure that there's no major signs of wear, no major scratches, no major cracks. They weren't already aware about in the listing. And to give you kind of a little tip here, the screen, for example, probably the most common area you're going to see where like chips, cracks, scratches is actually going to be on this black border around the display. So definitely examine closely the blackboard around the display and you know the screen itself, make sure that there's no major cracks or scratches that you didn't see before in the listing. Once you have that checked, you wanna plug in the computer, you wanna turn it on. And if it boots to a setup screen, you wanna set up the computer kind of like you typically would set up an iPhone or an iPad. And once you get to this home screen here, uh, that's where you wanna be because we wanna test everything out. So once we're on this desktop here, you're gonna to wanna to go to system settings and then you're gonna to wanna to go to Wi-Fi, and then you want to sign in with that person's Wi-Fi network. And they'll let you know here under the Wi-Fi network name when you're connected. So once you're connected, you wanna open up Safari, and you wanna make sure that a web page will load. So the web page loads, that's good. And then next we're gonna to wanna to go to Bluetooth. And we're gonna to wanna to connect a Bluetooth accessory and make sure that it pairs to the computer and that our Bluetooth accessory works. All right, so once that is all tested and that works, we're gonna go check the display next. So to check the display, we're gonna to go to wallpapers and then we're gonna go all the way down to colors, click show all. I wanna click this grayish color right here. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go examine the display and see if we see any bright spots. Um, so if you see like a little bright speck, uh, that could mean a sign that dust or something got between the display glass and the LCD. It's a very minor display defect, so don't freak out if the computer has one. But the computer has like a ton of them uh, that could be a sign and you really want to negotiate down there. But I'd say a vast majority of time, that's not going to be an issue. Another thing we're going to want to test out here with the display is image retention. And this is a really common issue on the 2017, uh, 2015, 2014, these early 5K iMacs. And to test out image retention, you're going to want to go to Safari. And then you want to search up image retention test. You're going to want to click on this result right here. And then we're going to go make this full screen. And you want to leave this displayed on your computer for, I'd say, at least two minutes, preferably five minutes. And after that time's up, you want to click this button here and switch it to gray. And if you see like a faint remnant of the checkerboard pattern up on screen, that means that the computer display has an image retention issue and like you really, really want to negotiate them down in price there because that is a major display defect and these displays are really expensive to replace. In fact, they could be worth as much as the computer. But if that looks good, we can exit out of there and we can move on to the next thing. Next up, we're going to test the webcam and audio. And for this, go to Launchpad and then you want to click on Photo Booth. We're going to switch to Video Mode. If you found the video helpful, be sure to leave a like. We're gonna click on our video. You wanna play back the audio and make sure that works. And if you hear nothing, um, it could mean that the computer is just on mute. So check that, just go to settings, uh, go to sound, and then make sure that mute isn't checked right here. And then once that's done, we're gonna move on to checking the ports and this is also a good time too to check out your keyboard mouse and make sure that they work, but try to test as many ports as you can, make sure that they all work. And if they're all work, then you finally finished checking the hardware on the computer and now it's time to move on to software. So the first software thing we're gonna check here is the specs. So to do this, click the Apple logo in the top left, then about this Mac, and then click on more info. It'll pop up a screen showing all the specs of the computer. And you want to make sure that the specs listed here match the specs in the listing so you make sure you know exactly what you're getting another thing to it here is you'll see this thing that says mac os it'll tell like a mac os version like mac os ventura 
Mac OS Sonoma, Mac OS Catalina, etc. And this is really important because a lot of people aren't really aware about this when buying all these iMacs is some pro applications will require a certain version of Mac OS uh, in order to run. So giving an example here, Photoshop requires Mac OS Big Sur or newer. And in order to run Mac OS Big Sur, you need a 2014 iMac. And this applies to a lot of other pro apps too, and even apps off the Mac App Store, is that they'll stop supporting their applications on iMacs that Apple stopped getting security updates for. So to kind of give you an idea here, Apple give computers the latest versions of Mac OS for about six to seven years after they get the latest updates. And then for another two to three years, they'll give these computers security updates. So realistically here, I would say computers that are 10 years old, you know, are kind of the cutoff point where Apple stops getting those security updates. So just be careful there and, you know, look at the system requirements for these pro apps you're thinking of using and make sure that the computer can run the version of Mac OS that that pro app needs. However, for the casual user though, uh, who doesn't use those pro apps, it's not gonna be a really big issue as long as you're buying like a 2012 or newer iMac, you're still gonna be able to browse the web and you're still gonna be able to download a vast majority of applications off the web. It's just for those pro apps like Final Cut Pro, Adobe Photoshop, stuff like that. Another really important thing we're gonna wanna check here too is storage. So go down to storage here and then click system report. And then you wanna to wanna to go to storage here if I can find it. So click on storage and then under medium type, it'll tell you what type of hard drive the computer has. Now, this is very important because there's three types of Mac hard drives. The first hard drive you have is your typical spinny HDD hard drive. And these are really cost effective and a good option if you plan on storing a lot of stuff and you're only gonna use a computer occasionally. But the downside of this though, is that they're really slow. Uh, sometimes it'll take a few seconds to load apps and the computer will take like a minute to boot up. And if you're really familiar with that spinny rainbow wheel, well, you're gonna be familiar with it on this type of hard drive. And unfortunately, this type of hard drive is the most common Mac hard drive out there, which can make it really difficult for those looking for a nicer hard drive. And this leads me into the next type of hard drive you'll see on these computers, and that's SSD hard drives. SSD hard drives, they use computer chips instead of a spinny disk. So load speeds are a lot quicker, kind of like your phone's load speeds. But the downside of SSD hard drives though, is they're a lot more expensive and they're a lot harder to come by. So for like the same price as like a one terabyte, you know, HDD hard drive, you might find a 256 gigabyte solid state hard drive computer. Um, another type of hard drive too you might see on these is Fusion drives. And what a Fusion drive is, is it uses an SSD hard drive for the operating system and kind of the computer's main files. So it gets you slightly faster load speeds. However, when you're accessing files stored on that HDD hard drive, the bigger hard drive, it's a lot slower. So Fusion drives are kind of a mix between the two. Now, it is kind of hard to find these iMacs with the type of hard drive you want. And this leads me into something that I've been doing for the past few years now, and that's booting off an external hard drive. So I have a one terabyte, actually two terabyte SSD hard drive that I boot off of to get more storage and those faster speeds. And I actually have a tutorial upload on YouTube on how to create one of those bootable hard drives so if you're shopping around for these and you can't find one with a hard drive type you want, that's an option to consider as well. And then the next thing you're gonna check here is software locks. So click this little icon here. And if it says sign in and it gives you a screen like this to sign in your Apple ID, that's good. That means the previous owner removed their iCloud and Find My from the computer. But if there's an account signed in here, you definitely wanna make sure they sign out of their Apple ID uh, before you buy the computer. Another thing we're gonna check here too is passwords. So you wanna click this deal here that says login password or touch ID and password. And it will say here, a login password has been set for this user. So if you wanna remove the password, you can click change and you can type in the old password. And then if you leave this blank, hold on, press continue. Uh, that removes the password from the computer. So if you wanna get back into the computer now, uh, you just press the return or enter key and you don't have a password set for the computer. So that's how you remove the password. And then the next thing you're check here is remote management or locks. So go up to the search bar here and then search up profiles. When I click profiles here and it should say no profiles are installed. If it says a profile is installed here, that is another thing you definitely want to make sure that they remove because schools and stuff will buy these computers and they'll have them for their classrooms 
and it'll have a configuration profile set for them and it locks the computer to that. So you definitely wanna make sure those are removed as well. Now the final lock we're gonna to wanna to check for is firmware locks. So in order to do this, you need to shut down the computer and then go into macOS recovery mode. On an Intel Mac, in order to do that, you'd hold down the Command R keys while you're booting up the computer. And on an Apple Silicon Mac, you're gonna hold down the power button until it says startup options. And you wanna click the option screen and then it'll go into the recovery mode screen. If you go into that recovery mode screen and you're greeted with this deal here that has a lock icon and it asks for a password, that means the computer is firmware locked and you wanna make sure that they remove that. I'd say firmware locks though are kind of rare in general and I don't think you're gonna really have to worry too much about it, but it is something that you wanna check and just take that extra precaution before you go and buy the computer. And then one final thing you wanna to do too is reset the computer. And the reason why I mention this is a lot of people won't properly reset these or they just won't reset it all together and they still have some of their old data on it. So I'll leave links down below on how to do that. And resetting the computer is kind of a time consuming process. The steps aren't really time consuming, but actually the time it takes to reset these are. So I'd recommend just taking it home with you, resetting it at home because it will take about an hour to erase the operating system and reinstall it on the computer. Now where to actually buy these iMac computers. The first place you can check out is by clicking one of the affiliate links down below and then purchasing anything off of Amazon. But actually, in all seriousness though, probably the best place to buy these is your local market. And the reason why is you don't have to worry about sales tax or the hidden shipping costs with buying these online. So check Facebook Marketplace, check the niche sites like Craigslist, OfferUp, check them daily and see if you can find a good deal on these computers. Cause I see a lot of good deals on IMAX all the time. And then some other options too, are you could consider buying from a reputable seller on eBay. I know I sell Mac as one of them, but be very careful shopping on eBay because there's some people out there who will create listings that are kind of deceptive or have things like, oh, runs macOS Sonoma when it's a 2013 iMac and they use OpenCore Legacy Patcher to install it and it's not official. So just be very careful shopping on eBay because sometimes there's some deceptive listings out there. I'll leave links in the description as to where you can go buy these computers as well as some links to tutorials. And finally, I'm gonna go put a checklist up on screen for those of you who want a checklist. But anyways, thank you all for watching and good luck on your iMac shopping journey.